Okay, this is a quick video um, just covering some of my observations on these um, little servos and problems that come about with calibrating auto um, and also the, the slow sweep that people have been um, asking about. So I'm going to cover all of these things. Apologies if it gets a bit long, but uh, there's a bit to do. Okay, so first thing is of, um, when you are actually um, fitting these to, to auto and looking for the... Uh, the the alignment and the centralization uh, and you'll see on on the videos that Camilo does um, basically you, once you've got the thing set up it's best to put this at 90 degrees and then pop your horn on and then just check that you've got this 180 degree rotation okay like this so that's what you're up to and then you will centralize these things okay so um, there's an issue there already and it's this Okay, if you look at the, the spindle on the servo itself, okay, just let the camera auto focus. Okay, so here, so oh, this is the the out, uh, the, the, the spindle that obviously pops out from the, from the gearing. Uh, on here, these little teeth, there are 21 of them. And um, what that means is that you've got a 17 degree angle between each of these teeth. So when you pop the horn on, uh, there will be 17 degrees between each of the different positions that the horn can be fitted to the spindle and this is going to cause a problem with Otto immediately which I'll explain in a second. Um, you also need to be a little bit careful with the um, the metal gear uh, uh, servos that you buy. I mean this one actually has a physical stop inside it so there's a little dimple uh, on one of the gears uh, when it reaches one uh, full lock in one direction it basically hits uh, the gearing underneath and stops and similarly in the other direction um, but you can see you get well over 180 degrees. Uh, as I said, you shouldn't be doing this with servos, but I'm going to be modding this one later. This is another one that I got, which is quite interesting. Um, and this one doesn't have a physical stop. So in fact, you can rotate this continuously. Um, the stop is actually written onto the board. Um, so when it reaches, or in fact, the potentiometer, when it reaches that pos position, it will stop. Okay, so whilst you may, it, certainly if you got one of these and you would be slightly confused that it actually rotated all the way around, you think you've got a 360 degree uh, servo, you haven't uh, because the board is going to stop it um, in the extreme positions. Okay, so what's the issue with, with Otto? Okay, so you've centralized, as you see in the video, you've centralized the, uh, the horn. Okay, you've checked your 180 degree rotation. Um, and now you come around to popping the horn onto the onto the servo, onto the spindle. And this is what's going to happen. Okay, with this 17 degrees, what actually we get is an eight and a half degree error either side. So the, this is the best worst scenario. Okay, so um, you should find, if you're very lucky, you'll be very close to 90 degrees. I think I've, I've got about one or two where it's on 90. Everything else is slightly offset. And you find this when you pop the horn onto the spindle. Okay, now I know roughly where this is and you'll feel it gripping. There it is. So that's one position. And that's where you would then push the horn down onto the servo. And you can see up here, it's actually about 14 degrees off the 90 degrees. Okay, the 90 degrees I've set, and I'll show you how this works in a second, I've set using um, a, a potentiometer. So, so this won't be a long way out. And if you put the leg on, on Otto, you'd see it was pointing in a slightly skewed direction. So you, you take the horn off and find a slightly better position. And of course, knowing that that's about 14 degrees one way, I know it's going to be three, about three to four degrees the other way when it actually fits on. And there it is. You can see now, probably not too, let's see if you can just see there. Right, you can see it's, it's actually at 93, about 93 and a half degrees on this protractor. Okay, so that is actually the best we can do. Okay, we're going to be a three degrees out for the leg, not too noticeable. But it's still something, of course, that you look at uh, when you're doing the calibration. OK, so let's take a look at the calibration. Um, I'm just going to turn the camera off. And you should now see um, the Blockly code. OK, so um, it's fairly straightforward. It's very similar to the DC motor. OK, so you can see here that um, I'm reading the analog pin. So this is a 10 bit number and this is just a conversion factor from the zero to 1023 into an angle between zero and 180 and that's written to the oled and also written to the to the servo okay so that's that's how this works very very straightforward um 
and let's see it in action. Okay, so we have we have the um, the leg on auto now. It's slightly skewed. We've got it set at ninety degrees. Um, of course, you could have just written home to auto, uh, and you'll find actually to get the head on, you need just need to correct that angle that we were out because of the spindle. It's about three to four degrees. There it is, four degrees, and that is now pointing at 90 degrees so so that would be my central calibration that i have for uh, for otto so that would be the home if you like where the legs sh or that leg in particular that servo should be pointing now directly forwards okay but from this we can also see that actually we've got a bit of a full sense of security with these with these horns you know when we are rotating and thinking oh wow we can get more than 180 degrees well physically you can but you can't when you're writing to the servo so Let's take it down to zero. Okay, so. All right, so with the potentiometer now, potentiometer is on full lock one way. You can see there, that's a minimum angle. And in fact, you've got a bit of parallax, but this angle here is four degrees. Okay, so it doesn't reach 180. That is the best you're going to do. And if we go in the other direction, okay, to 180 degrees, this is. 172 degrees this is about eight degrees back from the from the straight line from the 180 so you can see here in fact the range that we have is not 180 degrees it's between four and 172 so only a range of 168 degrees so these would be the things that you'd be looking at certainly when i'm looking at um setting calibration for other things this is something i'm going to be looking at you know getting it where exactly are my zero and my my 180 do i get to the full and what does that mean in fact there's a slight asymmetry it goes 4 to 94 okay so 94 was central so 4 to 94 so there's 90 degrees squeezed into 86 degrees there and then of course we've got the remainder going from the 94 up to the 172 so you know there, there, there's a different amount of sweep on the top end if you like uh, to the bottom end again something typical of these uh these slightly cheaper servos right now there's another way that you can actually write the code to the servo so we can also do it using um, microseconds so I'm just going to upload this code I'll check the ports yep that's all good okay okay so I'm just going to check the port so if you just look at this code and then I'll switch back to the to the camera um, very similar, I'm just writing to the OLED, but now I'm writing in microseconds, okay? So I do a conversion, a mapping here of the angle, the 10 bits value from the analog to, well, with, with servos, usually you're around about, well, they say in the, in the documentation, 1,000 to 2,000. In fact, it's usually about 500 to 2,500, and you'll see that that happens with, with this um, server that I've got. Okay, so let's put the camera back on and show you what's happening now. Okay, so you can now see that I was at one extreme uh, end. Okay, I don't know, I've got some random letters there, probably me typing. Ah, yes. Okay, let's just upload that code again. Okay, it's keyboard shortcuts, I'm afraid. Uh, they end up turning up on the programs. <laughs> okay, so... Let's check that. Right. Upload. Done. Okay, so that's that's corrected. All right. So let's. You can now see the equivalence to the the angles, but in uh, microseconds now. So that's at one extreme. But in fact, three thousand. Um, we don't get to. Uh, the servo will stop at around about two thousand five hundred, and we we'll start to see. Let's just, yeah, so it's about 2,000, 2,500, a little bit below that. Um, that's the point, that's the extreme end. Now the central position will be around about 1,500 normally. Let's just get that a little bit above in this case. So about 1,516, uh, so that's now centralized. So. This is the equivalent to the to the 94 degrees now so that's the central position and then down at the other end so this is going back round to the four degrees uh, minimum 
that actually happens at about 550. Yeah, a little bit above that starts to move. There you go. You can just see the servo moving around there. So rather than going now from four degrees round to 172, so a range of 168, we've got a range of roughly 2000 going from about 550 up to about 2500. So you have about 12 times um, the resolution that you get using microseconds than you have with um, angles. And this is actually quite useful for the sweep, which I'm about to show you. Okay, so the first sweep program I wrote was this one. So this is a, a slow sweep on, on um, using angles. Uh, this is non-blocking code. Okay, so I could in here be putting, let's take out that Z. I could be putting in here, um, I'm not sure if it shows up, but in this if statements that we have in the, in the loop, um, other code for the nano which could run. Okay, so I'll upload this and turn the camera back on. Okay, so this should now give us a sweep. Um, let's see, is it? Yeah, it's just compiling, uploading. And now you can see we've got a sweep here. So this is a sweep uh, with a 50 millisecond. Um, it's not a delay, of course, uh, this is non-blocking. So it's using basically the difference between the time that you read and then 50 milliseconds later. That's why you can write code in that particular block. So it's actually quite smooth, but you do need to be careful with the values you put in. So for instance, if you put in a value of one or five, let's say five milliseconds to this. So I'm just gonna upload that now. Okay, it's compiling. Let's see the nano flash in a second. So of course this sweep is going to be much quicker, but you'll notice it doesn't reach round to here. So I think when you're doing your sweep and slowing think you need to be careful that you've got the full range. This could cause issues. Um, so certainly on an angle, something like 50 milliseconds is sensible. Now an alternative is using microseconds. So this is the program for microseconds. Um, now with this factor of 10, or in fact 12, 50 milliseconds on the angles, uh, we're fitting about 12 different microseconds in between each angle. The delay time will be about four. So if I just upload this, and switch the camera back on. Okay, so it's just uploading. So there you go, you've got a really nice sweep um, happening there. Of course, the bigger the delay that you have, the more jittery the motion will be, but certainly writing things in, in microseconds uh, is giving me much, much better results than using um, angles, but uh, Blockly set up for angles. So it may be that that's the way that someone like Burger T wants to go with this. Um, well, I'm a bit of a nerd. I'd be going with the microseconds. It is actually the way that the servo library works. Even though we write an angle to the servo library, it does its calculations using the microseconds. So some interesting observations on servos in there and things you need to be mindful of and careful of. Um, there are minimum timings that you can have. Uh, you've got to be careful with that. You see, this is nice now. It, it gives the full loop and a nice smooth sweep. It, 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 it's really quite nice. Uh, and again, non-blocking, so other code could be written in 